Hi, I'm Tim Von Rieden here at CGCookie.com, and I'm here to bring you part two of the Drawing a Sci-Fi Character. And in the last part, we did the, the silhouettes, and in this part, I'm going to take three of those that I asked for you to choose, and I'm going to take those and start detailing them out quite a bit more. But I'm going to focus on doing it in grayscale rather than color, so I can focus on the values in the lighting rather than the color. So with that, let's get started. So here I have opened the silhouettes that I did from the first part. And from the tallies that I took in the comment section, it looks like 7, 13, and 15 were the ones that got the most. So it would be, let's see here, this would be this one, this one, and this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new image, and I'm going to do an 11, or I'm going to do a 15 by 12. I'm going to name it Sci-Fi 3 and choose OK. So I'm creating a new canvas because I'm just going to drag on these new silhouettes on a much wider canvas with uh, more inches so I can have a bigger canvas to work with rather than try to crop this one down. So I'm just going to go ahead and select number 7. Oop, there we go. and number 13 and 15 so as I was looking through these I thought it was kind of funny because these three are three that show off the different um, odd styles of sci-fi or at least the ones that I consider so for the first one the one with him sitting down, which is this one. This is the more old school style, and I'm going to give him more of an astronaut suit look and have it be more material focused. And then the second one was this more sleek looking one, and this is more of a the modern sci-fi design, and I'm going to keep it looking that way, and I'm going to have uh, the focus on the details, those horizontal lines going across these large areas of um, the larger clothing. And then the third one was more android uh, robotic looking, so more mechanical. So for that one I'm going to focus more on cylindrical shapes and kind of flesh that one out in a robot manner. So I'm going to take away that two number and now I'm going to rename these as one, two, and three. Like that. So now I'm going to have these all in one layer. Um, I'm going to try to condense my layers, but if you like working on your own layers and making it easier to go in and edit, you can keep them on separate layers. But for these, I'm going to go ahead and merge into one layer, and I'm going to mask out them so that I can just add black. And to do that, so if I make a new layer above the layer with my silhouettes on them, if I hold Command on a Mac, click on the actual substance in the layer, you can see how they're, then they are selected with the marching ants. And then if I go all the way down and choose this dark gray rectangle with the white circle in it, which is masking, you can see how it creates that mask. And pretty much now I'm only able to edit whatever's in the white area on my mask. So now if I go to my actual layer that I want to draw in, you can see that with my brush tool, I can only draw in the actual silhouette area, which is exactly what I want. Because as much as I like having the color there, it's only used to kind of highlight the silhouettes and make them look pretty, but I like working on a more of a darker base right away and then work my colors in later on. And for this uh, tutorial series, I'm going to go strictly in grayscale for this tutorial and then in, um, focus on my colors later on. So if I merge that layer down with Command D, now it's one layer that my silhouettes are on, and then I can work from here. So this is another thing where you can either add a new layer for each of the um, things that you're going to draw on top of it. So I'm going to have this layer be the start for my number one. So right away, I'm going to kind of fill in the shape of the character. I'm 
using those little details that I added on, kind of sketched in with the eraser tool on the last one as guidelines for me to work with when I'm adding in the actual silhouette. And this is where I might edit just minor things, make some areas a little bit bigger, a little bit tighten it up. And I'm going to do that for all three of them really quick. And for my brush, I'm just using the standard brush settings, but on my brush tip shape, instead of having that full circle, so instead of it being like that with the angle at zero, let's type it in, I'm squishing it down. Oop. Sometimes it's hard to grab these little black circles on either end. And I'm squishing it down so that I have a flatter brush to work with. And I'm doing that because I don't want so much round edging where the brush will be laid out, but more of a flat sort of a look that the brush will give then. I'll just keep those settings open over here and then move the canvas over. And then for the actual Android one, I'm going to keep a lot of these areas open where I feel like you would just see through it because these are just in centrical kind of poles that are keeping them together and then near the actual body is where there's a little bit more to him but I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet with him we'll see okay so now that I have these silhouettes kind of ready to go and ready to start fleshing out and rounding out and adding value to it, I need to first think about where I'm adding my light source to each of these. And this is very important because if um, you don't think of a light source, then you're just kind of adding value wherever and it's not going to be cohesive as a piece all around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend like this is a spotlight that's shining on my first guy. And I can kind of imagine that this spotlight is going to have the light coming from this direction so I want to have that represented when I'm adding in my blacks and my grays and my whites. So on another layer I'm going to actually do that. I'm going to just create a little just a value scale that I can then grab from. And then eventually as I'm adding in all these different grayscale values in my actual piece, I could just grab the color from the character rather than having to go to this bar down here. But I'm going to have that there for now. And then I'm going to go ahead and get started. So I'm going to have this on a layer above that one. And I'm going to go for it. So with this light direction in mind, I'm going to go ahead and start laying on some gray of, as to where the light would be hitting. So now, like I said, this concept that I'm doing for this guy, I'm keeping very old school and uh, material focused. So the only really hard surface things that I'm going to have in here are going to be his kneecaps and shoulder caps. So those are going to have that metal, kind of a older metal look to them. So those would reflect the most light. So this is definitely something to keep in mind on what materials you're adding to your characters and how much of light they would actually reflect. So something as different as satin from cotton to metal, uh, just knowing how they reflect light can greatly change how you actually uh, add color to them and how you concept it out. So now for him, I'm actually thinking he's going to be wearing some old, rugged-looking boots. And this is him. I'm almost imagining a story for him as I'm laying this out. And I'm kind of seeing 
this kind of older mechanic or some kind of worker that is taking a break and he's in his space outfit or whatever he's doing either on the moon or something and he just it looks like he's lived a hard life and you want to kind of emphasize that when you're adding in these uh, what he's wearing so these details because if you can give a character a story without having any background or any words but just looking at him through a picture um, then you have successfully done a great concept art because you concepted a character from um, nothing so like I said I'm adding this gray which is representing my first kind of pass on a, the lighting hitting the character and I'm keeping the direction of that light in mind and I'm adding it based on that light direction so it's gonna be really heavy on the top side and then on the bottom side of these legs especially it's gonna be a little bit more dark so now around his head I'm imagining this kind of helmet um, shaped kind of rounded out I don't know what you would call it but when the helmet is actually not up so like when Buzz Lightyear uh, when Woody first pushes the button and it kind of retracts back into it that's the kind of shape I'm going for so now I'm grabbing a lighter gray as you can see and I'm just just starting to give some highlight to it so I don't want to go for the immediate white because when I do that I'm adding kind of bold strokes that I want to keep it kind of subtle at first and then add the specular lighting kind of near the end so get everything underneath first and then highlight all the features and details that you created and to better show off the lighting and how I'm kind of imagining it I'm going to create a new layer above the background there and then just draw in a slight shadow for this guy and have it coming up to whatever he's sitting on and then give a heavy shadow from there something like that so now I'm gonna go back to my my first lighting pass layer I'm going to continue on. So now, on things like the tank that's on his back, you can imagine that the top of this would be lit, but then the back would actually give a shadow that would be on the tank, so it would only be brightest near the top where the light would be hitting it directly. And then since the tank is more of a metal surface, I'm going to give it more of a shine and it has that more condensed reflective surface look to it so I, don't, I look I noticed that I added just a little bit too much of a shine so I just grabbed that gray that was around it with alt as my color picker and then just laid it right back on So I'm going back and I'm giving some more highlight to these areas, but not a pure highlight, so I'm not using white. You can still see I'm using um, a pretty neutral gray. And when I'm thinking of drawing this kind of a metal reflective surface, I'm going to actually pull up a reference that we had our concept artist Nubia Palacios do a while back. And this is this X kind of a weapon that she did and it's really well rendered in the way that she did the metal and you can see in these different areas how it reflects based on the curve of the metal and that's what gives metal such a distinct kind of um, look to it compared to cloth or cloth uh, some other materials that don't give quite that great sheen like metal does so I'm gonna have that open 
on the side as another reference for me to use. And you might have some metal around his gloves. Then going back to that kneecap that I was talking about. So when I'm doing this, I'm trying to keep lighting in mind. So like even on this kneecap, I mean it's pretty neutral all around, but that's not how it would look. So I'm going to actually go in and cover it up where there would actually be more of a shadow because the kneecap's more of a rounded shape. So I want to give off that effect rather than having it look like a flat surface. Then for folds in clothing, um, it's just best to kind of look at some clothing or folded up material to get that feel rather than just trying to you know do it on your own. It's, you don't have to feel ashamed to use reference. It's something that's a great learning tool and after you do it enough it'll become um, almost like second nature on how to draw it and you can just do it without even having to look. But starting off I would definitely recommend looking at um, material reference and learning that the fold patterns and how they work. So now for the actual head, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit, but I don't want to zoom in too much because then I'll start detailing and that's not the purpose of this section of the tutorial. That's for the actual rendering um, part. But I do want to get in close enough so I can get a nice clean look to the head because that's where a lot of the focus will be. So I'm going to give them that old school astronaut, like if I look in my background reference, the one that he's wearing in the movie Moon. I really like that one. It's very classic looking where it has like the two circles on the side and it wraps around the head. So I'm going to stick with that style and kind of work with it. And then for the face, I'm going to highlight the areas that would be catching the most light. So his forehead and the nose. Since he has either a cigar or a cigarette that he's smoking, I'm going to try to add in some areas that you might not be able to see. So the hand might be covering up quite a bit up here, depending on how he's holding it. I'm going to get that upper cheek. But I'm not trying to over detail this, so I'm trying to keep it very simple. Because then when I actually get into detailing it, then I can go in and really try to get in the separate facial features like the eyebrows and the nostrils and really try to make it look more like an actual human rather than kind of a mask, almost like a renaissance looking statue yeah I'm not liking that so I'm gonna redo that one and just like that I can just cover it up with black and go ahead and get started again that's the great thing about working with grayscale is you can work quick and you can cover things up really fast if you're not liking how they're looking There we go, that's much better, I think. So 
So now I'm going to grab just a little lighter of that white, or of that gray, just add some subtle highlights. Just add a little bit more value and round them out a little bit more. So I'm not going to add too much highlights on the actual clothing, so like the clothes that he is wearing because they wouldn't uh, reflect as much light as the kneecap or the metal contraption that's around his neck. Okay, so now I'm going to flip it to give it one more pass and then I'm going to go on to the sleeker looking one in the middle. So I can go, I have my setup or my sh keyboard shortcut as command Q, but I'm going to go ahead and go image, image rotation, and flip canvas horizontal. So now we got it flipped and we can see some areas that might need to be adjusted. So his leg is looking a little hyperextended, but I'm going to fix that later on. I'm going to keep it like this for now. Maybe have his shoelace coming off. Ah, no, I don't like that. Okay, so now I'm at a point where I feel like I can move on to the next. And this is a good enough base for me to start detailing when I get into that in the next video. So I'm going to flip it back. And I guess as reference, I'm going to move over the light. And now we're going to work on number two. And I'll do it on another new layer. But first, I'm going to add in that shadow, just like I did for the first one. Nothing too crazy, just a standing shadow that slowly, slowly fades out into a lighter gray. Now I'm going to go back to that layer that I edited for the first one. I'm going to grab a lighter gray and I'm going to go ahead and get started. So now this one's a little different. This one I can work with almost larger bolder strokes that represent kind of larger areas of the character's material because um, his are a little bit more clean looking where his are kind of wrinkled and uh, more worn and have a little bit more crinkle to them, where this one's very clean and polished looked. So I'm going to represent that when I'm laying out these strokes. I feel like I had these layers of this clothing that go around the arms. And I'm not really sure what material this would be. I'm sure kind of a stretched fabric. Or I could just make it a metal sheen and make it almost an armor looking type of suit.
and then where the actual horizontal stripes are. That's kind of like the centerpiece of his body. I'm just going to give some quick brush strokes too. I'm not going to focus on them too much. I'm not going to zoom in and try to make them look perfect because I can do that later on. Here I'm just trying to capture some value and form to the overall shape. And just a reminder, don't forget to save. You don't want to lose your work, so I recommend doing that often. So as I'm building up these values, I'm kind of creating these interesting looking forms that I wasn't initially planning for, but now I'm kind of liking how it looks. And that's that happens all the time when you're drawing out a character that your original thought um, as you lay it out you might start working but then you start something new or an accident happens and you're actually more pleased with the accident than how you originally planned it so then you stick with it so now very hard um, edge surfaces these are very easy to do so like this thing that's surrounding his head or his neck is going to be a flat surface on the top, on the sides, and then on the inner, on the front side. So then on the top would be a solid color. Then on the sides, first I would cover it with that black. Then wherever the light's hitting the strongest, it would be the lightest of the grays. You can see how that gave it a quick sense of value to it. Then since the head would be giving a shadow, I gotta cover that up. So now for the actual pants, I imagine that it would be kind of laid out and then where it actually came onto the knee, it would be collapsed and it would give itself some of those folds just around the knee area though. Then we'd get some of those shadows that the folds create. And then same with the other side. There we go. Then for his actual knee, I think I'm going to do a lower kneecap. So it almost just starts like just below the knee and then go down halfway up the leg like that. And I might have some kind of strap that's wrapping around it from the inside. Give some footing to the back of the leg. And if there's areas that I'm not sure what I'm going to do with yet, so like on these um, feet, I'm just going to leave them like this. And I can uh, mess with it later on when I'm detailing it a bit more. But if I don't know right away, uh, I don't have to force it. I can always just save it for later. Might give him some kind of a fancy belt buckle that wraps around there. And 
I'm gonna just give some slight shading on that arm. Not really worried too much. And then this arm. Add that hand back in with a black and then grab a gray to add some value to it. So I'm using this lighter gray to add that slight highlight to it. Not the pure white highlight, but just enough to round it out quite a bit more. Now for his actual head, I'm thinking it's going to have, you're actually going to be able to see the neck just a little bit. I think I'm going to give him some hair as well. It's a nice little short cut like that. And I'm going to draw in the forehead, the top of the nose, and the cheeks just like the first one. Not worrying too much about how detailed they look, just enough to emphasize where it would go. So I'm thinking the head is actually going to be a little bit bigger, so you might not even see that other sh side of where this head thing or the neck piece wraps around. And that you're only going to be able to see the, see the side of his face. Unless if I go in and add it in right now, like that. There we go. That feels better. Then I can re-add the lighting on top of the side like that. Okay, I'm going to flip it. See what it's looking like. It's a little uh, crazy for a pose. A little bit of a S pose that's going on. So I can make that a little bit more relaxed later on. Even this leg, it looks like it should be standing more like this, which I think would be much better. But I'm not going to over focus on it yet. I can edit that later. I'm just adding in some black to round them out a bit more, give them some more substance. Flip it back. Okay, I'm satisfied with that one. I'm going to move the lighting source again. So it'll be a little off screen. And then this will be the last one, which is the Android. So I'm going to go to my shadow layer. Create the shadows based on that lighting information. So I'm going to start from his feet and then just kind of push it out, keeping it the darkest where it's closest to his feet and then trying to lighten it out a little bit as it goes on. I'm trying to find the right direction of the light that I want to work with. Maybe something like that. Or 
Okay. So I'm going to go back to the layer that I have all the edits on. I'm going to grab my gray and get going again. So now since I'm using a lot of metal texture in this one compared to the last one and definitely the first one, I'm going to be very careful on how I lay down my gray. Because so I'm going to use it to highlight these cylinders that are kind of holding them up. And then using a very light gray to add a highlight. So instead of using a flat one for this area, I'm going to go ahead and if I click in my brush tip shape, if I click on the top, see how the arrow now points um, directly up? So now when I go back on the screen, see how it looks like this now. I'm going to use that to draw in my highlights. So I'm imagining that the body would shadow up to this point. And then, so most of this, I'm going to keep dark in here. But then, where the leg is extending out, I'm going to add in that light source. And for his foot, imagining very simple triangle shaped foot with the flat top and then I'm going to give him a flat toe representation as well right there and this thing in the back might be uh, maybe his heel or like a brake or something. Maybe you can run really fast. Something where you want to play with the different shapes that your silhouette has given you and they don't make complete sense on what you're thinking for that character. Just go with it. See if you might make a pretty cool discovery on something new that you did not expect to add in. And then if not, I mean you can always erase it and try with something else. But it never hurts to try. So I'm going to go back on this leg now, seeing what I've done for that first leg. And I'm just going to try to almost replicate it on this side. So to do that, I might have to erase some of the silhouette that is going on. So this is another reason why I like to work on a single layer when I first start off, so that I can erase and adjust things pretty easily. Like even the leg that I wanted to adjust on the second guy, I could have just pulled that into the liquify filter and um, pushed it in. Whereas since I'm working on separate layers, I have to uh, merge it together first before I do that. Which is fine. It's just different ways of working. And whichever one is most comfortable for you, I would stick to it. And since I know most people like to work in having a lot of layers so they can take away and see the changes they've made or if they need to adjust things. Or if you're working in the I'm an industry where if you're doing concept art for something and you need to take away layers and change things like uh, things like uh, if you're working on an arm piece and you have to do like five different designs well it's easy to have the five designs each on their own layer so that you can go in and uh, edit those really quick or even if you need to show a client it's much easier to have them on separate layers than trying to flatten it on one image and then trying to show it multiple times. So right now I'm trying to give that flat old school kind of robotic foot to him. Very simple compared to this 
kind of messy looking structure that's holding up his legs together. So I'm going to now go on to the upper body. And it looks like he has these kind of arm pad things that I'm just going to highlight right away. Give it a separate shape. I like how those look, even though this one would have that shadow then coming off his head like that. And then I'm giving him the same sort of a headpiece as I did for the first one. Just give it that very spherical look and shading to it. But instead of having it stop like it did on the first one, I'm going to have it continue down into his upper body. Almost as if it's like a rib cage that's fully going up and it kind of looks like a little tornado from here. So now I'm just going to go ahead and add in some solid blocks of gray throughout. Trying to give it a little bit more shape with these sections. So this isn't just one light that I'm working with. I'm also imagining there's some ambience light going on and some bouncing. So I, that's why I'm adding like light in this area where it would be perfectly black if this was the only light in the area that was lighting this character. some flat surfaces where his thighs would be. And I give him kind of a that same object that's wrapping around this guy's neck. I'm going to wrap around this guy's waist. And then I'm going to move my brush back into the flat direction so I can give these nice highlights to this cylindrical thing that's kind of wrapping around his head. And grab an even lighter one to push it, push out those values a little bit more. And I don't know what's going to go down here. I'm going to imagine some robotic connecting that's going on. I'm just going to add that in. So now the tricky thing is trying to figure out what kind of head that I want this guy to have. If I want it to be more humanistic or robotic. Um, I think I'm going to go with a solid type of a head, kind of a solid shape, and maybe give him like eyes without any nose or mouth. Or I could have it come in almost forming that shape of the skull. That maybe show how the head's connected inside of this thing and then just show the little slots for now on how that would kind of represent where the eye sockets or however he sees would go since I'm metal since I'm imagining this as a metal type of a surface. I'm going to go ahead and draw this crayon as if it were 
So imagining the light would be catching the inside of the eye socket. That. Make it a little bit more fearsome. We'll have a more of a downward angle on these eyes. Like that. There we go. So now I might have some inner lights or something that might be shining. Or maybe just a little glow like that. And I'm not going to worry about the hands. Maybe he's holding something or just got him out almost ready to attack. This almost looks like a rebel kind of a android that's on the loose, but he was unfinished. Or whenever I'm, you know, drawing these characters out, I'm trying to think of a story for each of them on what kind of world would they live in and how that would affect what they're wearing or how much wear and tear is added onto them. And these are just things that you should think about when you're concepting out your characters, and it would just add little details that you might not have thought of earlier. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty good about how this guy's looking. So I'm going to go ahead and save it again with Command S. And then, if you want to keep the initial silhouette layer, what I like to do is just grab the layer, drag it all the way down to the post it note, which will create a new layer like that. It'll create a copy of that layer. So now I'll just keep the copy down here. I'll hide it. And then these layers that I did on top, I'm going to merge down with Command D. So that's one solid layer. And I'm going to delete that. Or I guess I'll keep it in here for the PSD if you want to download the source files. And I'll keep all these other elements in here. I'll just hide them though. And then nothing's on that layer. So there we go. And before I end this off, I'm going to do sort of a quick pass on each of these because now that it's one layer I can edit things really fast and so I'm going to zoom in just do final little details or little highlights and rendering that can be seen throughout so now I'm going to work a little bit faster and actually I'm going to go ahead and time lapse this out just I'm probably going to do like 5 to 10 minutes, minutes overall, so I don't want to waste your time. So I'm going to do that really quick. So there we are. This is the first step in detailing them with the grayscale value. And in the next video, I'm going to go ahead and render them even further and maybe add a little bit of color. So thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something.